Hey there! So today we're going to be going over how to stick to walls, jump off of walls, and climb walls. So with that being said, let's just get right to it. The first thing we're going to do is open up the Puppets Logic microchip, go up into the Gadgets menu, into the Logic and Processing sub-menu, and put down a microchip. Within this microchip, we're going to be wanting to put down both an AND gate, as well as a NOT gate, and once we have placed those two things down, we're going to go over to the Sensors and Input tab and place down both a Trigger Zone as well as an Impact Sensor. Once we have those things, we can then go to the Gameplay Gear section and put down a Puppet Interface. Now what we're going to do is go into the Trigger Zone and change it so that it only detects things that are labeled as Wall. Additionally, I want to make sure to change the size of the Trigger Zone to something more small and in front of the puppet. That way, he can only jump off of things that are close to him and that are specifically labeled as Wall. If not, this character will be able to jump off of any solid object, which could ruin the level design itself. Additionally, I'm also going to be making it so that when you are not on the ground, it will then send a signal into the AND gate. This will make it so that you can only stick to a wall while you are in mid-air. We're also going to take the touch output from the impact sensor, as well as putting in the signal from both the NOT gate and the trigger zone. So now we have an AND gate that only activates when you are not on the ground, when you are touching something, and as well as detecting a wall nearby. What I quickly did here is I made a simple sculpt that I'm then going to tweak and rename into wall. That way, I will now have it so that the trigger zone only detects this specific object. What I want to do now is I want to make it so that I can properly stick to the wall and not be able to move. So the way I'm going to do that is by using a mover and putting that down. And specifically what I want is the dampening from this mover, that way it'll make me stall in the air. I'll just plug in the AND gate into the power on the mover, and now we can see that going into test mode, whenever I jump towards this wall, I will then start sticking to it. But as you can see now, I can pull away from the wall, so to quickly fix that, I'm going to be putting down a keyframe, and in this keyframe, I'm going to animate it so that the different movements on the puppet are disabled. Once I've done that, I can plug in the main AND gate into this new keyframe, go into test mode, and then see if it's working. Now that I'm in test mode, I can see that whenever I jump onto the wall, I perfectly stick to it, and I am unable to pull myself away from the wall. You might have noticed that the puppet has slowly begun to rotate away from the wall. So to fix that, I'm going to be putting in a look at rotator, and have it so that it is maxed out, and to make sure that it is facing the wall as opposed to anything else, I will be using the target position input found on the third tab of the look at rotator. But before I do that, I want to make sure that the puppet is going to be facing the right way. So to do that, I'm going to turn on the grid snap and then have it so that this arrow seen here is facing forward. So once I have done all of that, I can then go up and what I'm basically going to want is I want to take the position from the touch sensor found on the impact sensor and put that into the target position. To do that, I'm going to be using a splitter to then take the output from the touch sensor and create different outputs that I can then use for the look at rotator. Now I can take the position from the splitter, put that into the target position on the rotator, and have the rotator powered via the same AND gate that we started with. Going back into test mode, we can now see that not only do I stick to the wall, but I also rotate towards it. Additionally, because of the way we set this up, we can see that when I approach the wall from any angle, I will still always turn to face it. You might have noticed that whenever I stick to the wall, I stay frozen in the jump position. So the way I can change that is I can quickly go into test mode here, stick to the wall, and then just let him stay in that position. Once that is done, I am going to be putting down a keyframe so I can then pose him in the position that I want. In this case, I wanted so that Milo here is properly grabbing onto the wall so that it looks like he's actually sticking as opposed to just splatted up against it. Now, you don't have to copy the pose that I am currently doing. There's a couple of examples on the left and right of the screen right now, so you can just do whatever you feel is best for the character that you are currently working with. As always with posing and animating, you want to make sure to take your time so that you're happy with the end result. And now I have a keyframe that looks like my puppet is actually sticking to the wall. So I can stop recording now, and I can reset the scene and put my new keyframe into this microchip, and I can power that with our primary AND gate. Once we've done all of that, we now have it so that not only does our puppet face the wall and stick to the wall, but it should be adopting a pose that looks more fitting. Don't worry about this, this is only happening because we still have the jump enabled. So what we have to do now is go into our first keyframe, and we're simply going to have it so that it disables the jump animation. 
After I've done that, I'm also just going to quickly disable some extra personal logic I have added just to make sure that there's nothing interfering with the animation whatsoever. Once I have done all of that, now I can test it and see that it is working exactly as intended. Unfortunately, the only thing we're missing now is a way to actually get off of the wall. To start this off, I am going to be putting down a signal manipulator, and then I am going to be going over to the left here and open up my controller, and then grab the controller sensor here, so then I can take any button of my choosing, in this case X, and input that into the signal manipulator. I am then going to go to the custom remapper tab and enable pulse at on. This will make it so that the output is only a quick tap. I put down another AND gate, so basically the way it works now is if all of these things are active, meaning you are attached to the wall and you now press X through that signal, it'll then turn on a timeline. And I will now put down a keyframe to disable the AND gate to make sure that while this timeline is active, the X button could not be pressed any further to somehow restart the timeline. Once I have put that keyframe down, I am now going to need a way to actually move away from the wall. So to push off of the wall, I'll use a force applier, and to look away from it, I'm going to be using a rotator. What I find that works best is having it so that the rotator is a few ticks long, while the force applier is as short as possible. For the settings, I am going to have it so that the force applier is at full strength, at a speed of about 7, and I'm going to make sure it's set to directional. I am quickly turning on the grid just so I can make sure that I place this arrow right behind him and facing directly away from him. I will then use the precise move tool to change the angle of this to diagonal. This will make it so that the jump is more of an arc when jumping off of the wall. For the settings on the rotator, we are going to be setting the speed to about 625, the strength to 100, and the dampening to 100, while also making sure to enable local space. I'm going to quickly turn back on the grid and simply move this up so that way the rotation will be horizontal. With that now set up, we are able to properly jump off the wall, but as you can see, we are over rotating. There's a couple of ways we can fix this. For one, we can go back into the rotator settings and mess with those a little bit, or we can simply just change the amount of time that this rotator is on for by making it smaller. So now when I test this out again, you can see that my rotation is a lot better. And of course, this is something that you can tweak and mess with until you're happy with the amount of force that you have as well as the amount of rotation. What we also need to do is have a way so that a player is not able to repeatedly jump off the same wall as seen here. So an easy way that I can fix that is I can go into this new keyframe that we had made in the timeline, and I'm going to shorten it so it's not active for too long, and basically I'm going to record it so that it disables the main puppet interface. What this will do is prevent me from being able to move while still in the middle of the jump animation. So now, despite how hard I may try, I'm unable to move back towards the wall that I just jumped off of until a certain amount of time has passed. This prevents me from repeatedly jumping off the same wall. I also want a way to simply drop off the wall without having to jump. So the way I'm going to do that is by copying my original timeline and simply altering it so that the force is not so strong and the angle is not so extreme. To be more specific, I'm going to put down the speed to about 2 so that it's not too strong but strong enough to still push me, and for the angle, I'm still going to keep it diagonal but more horizontal than vertical. Now to activate this new timeline, I'm just going to simply copy over the logic I had already used for the jump. The only way that the logic is going to differ from the jump is instead of it being with an X input into the signal manipulator, we're instead going to wire up the circle button. What we also have to make sure to do is disconnect the wire that goes from the circle button into the deep possess input on the controller. Because if not, whenever we press circle, we will then jump out of the character. So now, if we test it again, we can see that we're able to stick to the wall, jump off the wall, as well as drop off of the wall. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a wall climb. So what I also did really quickly off screen is I simply made a very rough version of a wall climb. I didn't want to show this process simply because there's a lot better ways to do it and as I can show you right now, it's very rough and it's just more to get the job done for the purposes of demonstration. And I of course have the same long keyframe that disables the jump animation just to make sure it does not interfere with this animation here. So now for the wall climb to properly work, we do need to rewire a little bit of things here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a node in between the primary AND gate as well as our pose for clinging onto the wall. What this allows me to do is make it so that I can deactivate that pose while still keeping the rest of the logic active. 
for the wall climbing logic, we're going to start by putting down a splitter. That way we can have different inputs from the various directions we're able to implement on our left stick. I'll be using the local left stick just to make sure that the actual orientation of the character does not affect anything. And once I've placed that down, I can then go in here and put down a mover. Since this will be a very simple up and down movement, I'm only going to worry about just having a normal mover, and I'm also going to just simply turn on the local space and move this arrow so that it's facing up. Because I put the arrow up, I of course then have to put this down to negative because if not, the sticks will be reversed. What you could do is you can just move the arrow down, but for me it's just a bad habit to always have the arrow facing up. Now I don't have to worry about the dampening because we still have the original mover that we placed, so while climbing, that original mover will be active and prevent us from falling away from the wall. So now what I'm doing is taking the up and down output from the splitter, putting that into the speed of the mover, and having it so that the primary AND gate powers both the new splitter as well as the new mover. To activate my animation, I'm going to have it so that the splitter is split yet again, so that the up and down are separate, and then I'm going to take the up signal, which is negative, and have that power the animation. So now we officially are done with all of this, and we can go in and look at how it works. And we can now see that when I hold up on the left stick, I climb up, and when I hold down, I slide back down. Of course, if you want to climb in more directions, you could add more splitters, movers, and timelines. And now if you've been following along at home, you should officially have a way to cling to walls, jump off of them, and climb them. Thank you very much for watching, and for those of you that don't know, this video that you have just watched was made entirely on stream in a very painstaking process that was over the course of two days, eight hours total, there's a reason that these tutorial videos take a very long time for me to make. So, thank you again for watching, and if you ever have the time, you can always check me out over on Twitch. Um, I have the link in the description there, so just be on the lookout for that. And we actually have a lot of fun there. In fact, this last stream, where this video was made, I had to slap myself six times in a row. And that's thanks to my kind viewers. Thank you once again, and remember to always have sweet dreams.